<laughs> Helldivers 2. It's a game. Besides the amazingly self-aware setting the game presents itself in, the gameplay has some of the most intuitive third-person combat and cooperation I've seen in any game to date. I think it's really important to throw you guys a bone and sift through everything you need to know to start your journey off defending your country and your pride and your ego and masculinity and your balls, and I figured a generalized comprehensive guide to Helldivers 2 was well touched on at this point, so I wanted to structure the video a bit more of a linear timeline where I'll touch on the progression of the game as a whole and what you should expect to be able to buy, unlock, what's good, what's bad, all that stuff. I'm splitting this into two parts too because there's a lot to cover, and let's just call it early and late game, but really what I mean is levels 1 through 10 and levels 11 through 20. To get started, I'll first explain that. I'd like to cover an overall concept of the game first so that you really understand what you're getting into. In this ship, you're given terminals to allow you to further your experience as a Helldiver. The first terminal you'll notice right in front of you as you enter the ship is the management terminal. This is where you can customize your ship, personalize stratagems, and buy ship upgrades. We'll get into all these as you level up later in the video. The other terminal to the right is the armory. This is where you change your weapon loadout, character, armor, and boosters, as well as view your stats for the game. The gameplay terminal of the ship is the Galactic War Terminal. Here, you can see the map and its layout with the moons and planets we can land on. As the ship captain, you can select an area of interest and choose a specific planet to land on. The goal of the game is to collectively, as a player base, liberate the surrounding areas from the two species we fight against. In order to land on a planet, you select a mission or an operation, which is a collection of multiple missions you have to complete in one go, then run into the hell pod to choose a loadout, before finally landing on a planet. It's pretty straightforward. Now that I've touched on the basics of the game, the part I'd like to touch on, mainly in this video, are the- you Start flat out at level 1. Nothing to your name except the weapons, stratagems, and armor you were loaned in the tutorial. This is where the game stops holding your hand and you are given free access to the entire world. We'll cover the actual customization and the character progression later in the video, once we've unlocked a few things to purchase. Speaking of progression, the best way to progress from here on out is completing operations and orders. Operations, as I mentioned briefly before, are essentially a collection of normal missions that you have to complete together in a package without failing. I recommend these over missions, as there's a bonus at the end once you complete every mission in the operation. The orders, which can be found when pressing Z, are a good way to generate a lot of currency as well but are a more generalized and longer lasting grind than just a simple operation. At level 1, you start out with the trivial and easy difficulties, and as you progress, you unlock more and more difficulties, missions, operations, and gear in a relatively linear format. We'll cover the different types of missions in a future video, so subscribe if you're liking the content so far and don't want to miss it. For now though, just start leveling up with these tasks until you reach... Level 2 is the ultimate threshold to reach in Helldivers 2. Level 2 is where Helldiver unlocks their first customization for weaponry, armor, and stratagems in their two respective shops. By the time you get to level 2, which takes only a couple of missions or an operation, you'll have racked up enough currency to make some purchases. Speaking of currencies, there's three super notable ones, with others being rare and less important to the basics of progression. Requisition slips are the main currency that you get from every mission and operation, and sometimes from loot on the planet and orders. These are used to purchase different stratagems at the ship management terminal. At level 2, you've made enough money to buy your first stratagem, which could be anything from the orbital gatling barrage to the machine gun. Something more along the lines of the anti-material rifle though you'll have to wait for depending on your budget. The other type of currency I'll touch on right now are the service medals. You get these in the same way as you would the requisition slips at a much smaller amount. These are used to unlock the juicy weapons, armor, and utility offered in the War Bonds page when you press R to open up the shop. The War Bonds page is the main source of gear outside of stratagems. Here you can use metals to purchase armor, guns, grenades, optimizations, anything you can think of really. As you spend more metals and level up, you can unlock more pages of this gear as well. Seeing what you can unlock makes the grind so much more worth it in my opinion. Level 2 is also where you have likely unlocked the medium difficulty of missions by completing an easy operation by now. These missions pay more, and they are a bit harder with harder enemies. This is where you should focus on completing as many operations as possible to get to level 3, where the real unlocks and gear optimization truly begins. <laughs> level 3 
Level 3 is where you get a couple more unlockables and where you have enough medals, if you've saved up, to purchase your first new gun, the Punisher Shotgun. This is actually a pretty good alternative to the normal rifle they give you, and it packs a hard punch in comparison as well. Level 3 is one of the more exciting early game thresholds as you unlock a handful of stratagems as well. The most notable being the expendable anti-tank, the Eagle Cluster Bomb, and the Machine Gun Sentry. You also unlock the Orbital Gas Strike and the Supply Pack, but I haven't found as much use for those yet. I definitely recommend buying a shotgun first on the first page of the War Bonds if that's your style in shooter games, or the grenade and the armor if not. Also try to gear up with a new stratagem or two on your way to- Level 5 is the cream of the crop. What a weird fucking phrase by the way, cream of the crop, like, which fucking crops are cream of? <laughs> Level 5 is where you unlock the most stratagems at once in the early game, and I'll go ahead and list them right out of the gate before touching on some other interesting stuff. Level 5 stratagems include the recoilless rifle, the orbital 120mm barrage, the orbital airburst strike, the napalm strike, the EMS strike, the grenade launcher, and the laser cannon, Jesus Christ. Each of these have their own uses that I'll touch on in a later stratagem guide, so don't forget to check back on the channel in a couple weeks. But yeah, level 5 is like hitting your first gold mine of unlockable content in Helldivers, and it's also where you can really start chipping away at the third page in your war bonds with the credits you've earned. You'll notice when you first unlock it, the most notable things are the SMG 37 Defender, the Trench Engineer Medium Body Armor, and the Hellpod Space Optimization Booster. All three of these are really good options to grind for, and the optimization booster allows me to touch on another part of the game's fundamental mechanics of gear. Boosters are essentially power-ups that, when equipped, allow your whole team to benefit. The first booster here, for example, allows you and all of your teammates to spawn on the planet fully stocked. The catch, though, every team can only bring in one of the same booster at a time, which means no booster stacking, unfortunately. This will especially come into good use more as you level up and unlock more with your friends. Which brings us to... This level doesn't unlock any new stratagems, but it does offer a threshold to pass in the form of hard missions. Hard missions are where the game's difficulty curve is really present. I described the level difficulty curve with this graph I whipped up in MS Paint in like 10 seconds. It ramps up right around the hard difficulty and just gets absolutely absurd after that. By the time you reach level 6 in hard missions, you will likely be able to unlock multiple loadouts worth of stratagems. So work with your team if you have one to determine which ones are best for the mission, and experiment with the stratagems if you're a solo. Level 7 is where most people unlock their best stratagems, you know, the expensive ones, and page 4 of the War Bonds as well. Page 4 features some of the grindiest weapon and armor unlocks yet, with the cheapest of the usable stuff being the armor at a whopping 15 medals. The grind truly begins here, and I'd recommend getting used to those hour-long hard operations because not only is it going to get harder, but the grind is going to get grindier too. If you haven't already unlocked it by now, level 7 is pretty much where you'll first run into the extreme difficulty. But be warned that this is pretty out of reach for this level, and if you really want to give it a go, be my guest, but don't say I didn't warn you. Ah yes, level 8. This one's actually really good. It unlocks almost as many stratagems as level 5 and level 10, but at this stage of the game, unlocking new difficulties is a lot easier said than done, especially considering at this stage you will likely still be grinding out page 4 of the War Bonds equipment. Still though, there's a lot to talk about here at level 8 with the stratagems you unlock, those being the Orbital 380mm Barrage, the Jump Pack, the Eagle Smoke Strike, the Orbital Smoke Strike, and arguably the most important, the Incendiary Mines. All of these stratagems provide some use, but I'd honestly recommend saving some requisition slips for the main event at the big level 1-0, unless you're feeling partial to that Orbital Smoke Strike for some reason. Anyways, moving on to the second to last. Being the second to last level, this is kind of a fucking buzzkill. Level 8 and 9 are just kind of emerge in terms of the grind and equipment you'll be using, with the main difference being that at level 9 you'll probably have unlocked enough requisition slips to pull out a crazy batch of stratagems, and enough medals to finally grab a hold of the breaker shotgun. Wait a minute, holy shit I, f I forgot, um, uh, page 4, war bonds. Best early game weapon in the game tucked away down there, the Breaker Shotgun. This beast does slightly less damage than its other shotgun predecessor, but it's an auto shoddy. Do I have to say more? Regardless of if this gun meets your playstyle or not, you'd pretty much be shooting yourself in the foot if you don't at least try it. Trust me on that. 
Now that that seriously important oversight has been recorrected, let's get on with it. To the final. Level 10's an absolute whopper. Not a fucking whopper, Junior. I'm, I'm, I'm talking a fucking whopper and a half. It's like a triple whopper with fucking cheese. This level helps you unlock most of page four in the war bonds, if not one or two of page five's goodies. And more importantly, it unlocks the most amount of stratagems for any level in the game. There's so many different stratagems here that it'll make your head spin, so I'll try my best to cover them. First, you'll see the flamethrower and autocannon stratagems unlock, which is incredibly hyped actually when you first see it. Then as you scroll down, you'll find the orbital walking barrage, the 110mm rocket pods, the HMG emplacement, the shield generation relay, and both types of guard dogs, the rifle and the laser. Level 10 is pretty fucking rad to say the least. If you're a pro at the game at this point, you may or may not have completed an extreme operation and unlocked a level or two ahead of it. Good for you if you have. My team's not as lucky though. And with that level covered, that pretty much wraps up the progression of levels 1 through 10 of the game. If you all want to see me cover 11 through 20 in a part 2, and even late game post level 20, let me know down in the comments. This game's pretty fun and I'm excited to do some more content around it. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon down below if you want to get early access to content, shoutouts in the future, and some community posts. College just slowed down the content a bit, so I'm going on my Patreon might be a good option if you want to get updates as to where I'm at, and see cool stuff before it drops on my main channel. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the end.